for that lovely introduction. I had forgotten that uh, Asia Down Under had in, in fact won a uh, diversity award and it's been an absolute honour to have done so. Good morning everybody. Um, it's, I'd like to acknowledge thank Susan uh, Devoy uh, and all of the honoured guests and I have to say I too was a fan of your uh, amazing sporting prowess and now as the uh, Race Relations Commissioner. I thank the Human Rights Commission for the privilege of speaking at this year's Diversity Forum on behalf of the Minister for Ethnic Affairs, Honourable Judith Collins. Uh, she was unable to be here today but sends her greetings and best wishes for the forum. Um, and congratulations to the Human Rights Commission and those who have put together this forum. Given the breadth of the topics that will be explored today, uh, I am I'm sure that everyone will be um, will leave enlightened, challenged and inspired. The theme for this year's forum is My Dream for Aotearoa New Zealand, and that's a huge topic. Um, and I think um, Mr. Jadura, where is he? I can't see him right now, uh, at a community function asked me to sign one of those things, and uh, I, he actually knows what my dream is, because it is exactly the same as it always has been. My dream for New Zealand can be summed up in a single word, belonging. As a country, New Zealand stands in an encouraging uh, position. I am very pleased to say that during a review this year, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination noted um, uh, New Zealand's effort to combat racial discrimination represented many examples of best practice globally. And I think that's a fantastic position. The committee observed that New Zealand has put in place valuable programs such as better public services, addressing the drivers of crime and youth employment package, the alcohol and other drug courts, and the New Zealand police ethnic strategy aimed at improving ethnic relations and raising multicultural awareness. My dream for Aotearoa New Zealand is that it will be a place where everyone celebrates our diversity, where everyone can feel what many people take for granted, that they actually belong right here in Aotearoa. My dream is that people who look different, like me, sound different, or believe different things, will not feel excluded. That they will not feel unwanted, will not feel like they're second-class citizens in their own country of choosing. My dream is that anyone who has made their home in New Zealand will feel like what they are, first-class Kiwis. My dream is that New Zealand is a place where no matter what your profession, you can do your job without being subjected to abuse because of your origin, or where policies are not made out of a misunderstanding and in turn, prejudice of people who are born in different countries. While it may make us uncomfortable as a nation to acknowledge it, these kinds of things do in fact happen. Recently on my Facebook page, someone told me to go back to China. I responded and said, at least get the country right, I'm from Korea. <laughs> It is the ignorance of people that we have to actually challenge. Here's something that such people may not have considered. 101 years before it was made the second official national anthem, God Defend New Zealand was such a popular poem that it was set to music so people could actually sing it. The second stanza of the poem paints a picture of a nation of people of every creed and race, united in asking God for protection from dissension, envy, and hate. It makes me very proud that such a verse is included in our national anthem, that for the past 137 years, one of the most popular songs sung in New Zealand is a song that represents, presents racial and religious harmony as business as usual. My dream for New Zealand is that the New Zealand of our national anthem will become more than just an idea. It will become a real place. We are already one of the most harmonious countries in the world, and I am very, very proud of that. New Zealand's success depends on us embracing and taking advantage of diversity. Events such as the Office of Ethnic Affairs, Ethnica, Epic New Zealand conferences, and of course, this forum. 
are opportunities to find out more about the rich cultural diversity and business opportunities that these newcomers bring and to welcome them. A great statesman once said, and I quote, some people dream of success while others wake up and work hard at it. That was Winston Churchill, the other Winston, the one that I quite like. <laughs> Not the one that makes me feel like I don't belong here. <laughs> My dream for New Zealand is that those who work hard and success will be working <clears throat> on a level playing field, that the attitudes and opinions of employers, businesses and society at large will not be a speed bump for those who look so and sound different, like I do sometimes. Everyone in New Zealand is entitled to a fair go. We owe it to our whakapapa to extend opportunities and acceptance to everyone, every single one of us. Workplace diversity improves the performance of organisations. A New Zealand where employers look past appearances and hire based on skills and experience is a more prosperous one. I would like to see employers employing more ethnic minorities and more women in senior management positions. New Zealand police included. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not just picking on New Zealand police, I love the police. And I'm not talking about man band here either. <laughs> Sorry, was that a little bit too political? <laughs> Not only that, I would like to see more ethnic minorities and women applying for these positions. Often ethnic communities and women don't do that. And we need to encourage them and make it possible for them to stand up and be counted. But there, as I said, they have to first of all have to have the courage and confidence to take up these challenges and opportunities that are offered to them. My dream for my son is that as he grows through, goes through his education, he has the same chance of success as any other Kiwi. <coughs> that he will understand who he is and where he stands in the world. That he is um, a very proud Kiwi. Occasionally he tells me he's half Korean and 100% Kiwi and I think he is very right. This is my dream for all New Zealanders. And he sort of doesn't know that, but I would like him to become the first Korean all black in New Zealand. <laughs> Later on today, there will be a session on diversity in government. My dream for New Zealand is that one day, Parliament will reflect more closely New Zealand's diversity. It doesn't at the moment, and my dream is that it will. I would celebrate the first African, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Tongan, any diversity that we can add to Parliament would be an improvement that is now. That one day we will have a Prime Minister from an ethnic minority and that it won't be an unusual thing, that people won't look at it and go, what's that about? That we are all New Zealand. If Auntie, yes I'm Auntie Age, if auntie who did not speak English until I was 15 can become a member of parliament in New Zealand, every single one of you, youth, can become prime minister of New Zealand, regardless of where you come from. I will leave you with this thought. 50 years ago on Wednesday, Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King told the world his bold and ambitious dream. Today, I have told you mine, my very humble dream. My dream for New Zealand is possible if we wake up and work together, that we all belong, that we all belong in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Thank you once again, and I hope you enjoy and gain a lot from this forum. Kia ora